Hey there! Today I'm showing you how to paint these underwater scenes with watercolor. Like always, I'm starting off with some washi tape and putting that on the border so that we can get a very clean edge. And then I'm starting to make the first corner here. This one is blue because it's the water and there's nothing there. So I started off with this one because it's super easy and I could do that first. And then I used some masking fluid. By the way, I really love this masking fluid. It's amazing. I'm gonna link it in the description box if you wanna check it out. It's not sponsored or anything, but I really love it. So with this masking fluid, I painted some fish so that they would stay white afterwards. And then I started off with the second painting and I did the, the exact same thing basically, but this time most of the painting is blue. So I just left out the other part. And then I went on to the second one again. So I'm just basically going back and forth as the paint is wet and I just don't want to wait until it's dry. So I'm kind of trying to make to use this to my advantage. So then I added in those coral reefs and I started off with a yellow and then went in with a purple to make those shadows. So with this part, you can try to copy what I did. I'm gonna link my reference pictures down below as well. I changed them up quite a bit though. But you can also just make up any kind of scenery that you want to have. My basic idea here is just to start off with the light tone, with the yellow in this case, and then go in with darker tones like the purple and some blues and some pinks to make some shadows so that it will look cool. I also added in a little bit of details with some red and just a few colors, but I tried to stay within the color palette and not make it too colorful. So it's basically uh, this purple, yellow, blue color palette with a little bit of red. So I made more and more of those shadows and I thought that it could use a little bit more blue in the shadows. So I went back in later. You see that it's half dry here, but I didn't really worry about that because there... I had no problem with it being messy here because we're underwater and it doesn't have to look perfect or anything. It can be as messy or as clean as you want it to be. So I didn't really wait for the paint to dry and if it did make this cauliflower effect I didn't really care because I think that it really fits the theme. So there are these kind of rocks or whatever those are and I just um, I put down some shadows at the bottom of those rocks and then in the middle part I made those shadow sliders so you can see what I mean here I kind of those are these layers and on the top uh, or on the bottom they are darker and on the top they are lighter and within those two there's this kind of pink gradient so I hope you understand what I mean and it's I think it's easier to see it than to describe it I think you know what I mean here and again you don't have to force yourself to completely copy this so if this looks too complicated to you or whatever don't make the exact same thing you don't have to absolutely copy it you can if you want to but you can make up your own formations or look at the reference picture and change it up however you want it to be. So I really enjoyed this color palette actually. I really like how the pink is used for a shadow here. I went back in here to um, darken up the blue part again because it was a bit too light for me. By the way, I kept working on the bottom piece and didn't really go back to the top piece for a long time because within working on the bottom piece, I there was a pause where I did something else and then it was dry when I came back and so I kept working on the bottom one. But 
you can work on the top one or the bottom one depending on whether the paint is dry or not or you can just paint one of these there's no pressure to do it in the exact same order that I did it so here we are at the top painting again and I started with those reefs or corals here and I started with this orangey tone again I wanted to have the same color palette as I had on the top one uh, on the bottom one I keep mixing those words up why so um, I think that in the end it basically looks like it's one piece or that they go together this wasn't really my intention but I think that it looks kind of cool so here I did some little fish as well and yeah, it's kind of hard to go back in later and make something lighter with watercolors. It's basically impossible if you don't use gouache or something like that. So you either use an, another medium like gouache or you go with masking fluid. And this time I decided to go with masking fluid. So here I did the exact same thing. I did the yellow first then went in with darker tones and made the shadows and it's darker on the bottom and lighter on the top and then i went back into the blue areas and painted the water on this picture there are a lot of fish so i tried to make it look like it was on the reference picture to show this dynamic and that it, that those fish really swim together in the middle of the picture so uh, I kind of worked towards that here and I wanted to make it look a little bit darker on the edges and then go back in and make a little bit of lines and yeah then I removed the masking fluid on the bottom one and went in and added some details to those fish. I gave them some eyes and some colors so that they weren't completely white. You can see that the edges of the fish aren't perfect. So the masking fluid isn't extremely perfect, but I think that it's really good. I don't think that there's any masking fluid that will give you perfect edges that just doesn't work like that with the watercolor paper I think. So now I added in all those fish here and I just basically did those dots and lines in different kinds of blue tones and I even uh, did some lighter fish where I used an opaque tone of a uh, blue watercolor so a very opaque color you can see it on the bottom here but it's not really watercolor if you have cheap watercolor like i use here that's the watercolor confections pastel dream set or at least some colors of that set and some of the tones are super opaque which is not really a good thing for watercolors usually but i used it to my advantage here by the way if you're interested in this uh, watercolor palette then uh, check it out I already did a review on those and yeah here I'm adding in some bubbles with a white gel pen and just finishing up this piece I added in some details in the end and yeah here we are we're done with that video I wanted to say thank you guys so much for 5,000 subscribers I can't believe that we hit this milestone it's so amazing thank you all for being here and for joining me every week I really hope that you liked this video and if you did so please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel I'll see you next week goodbye